Hi everyone, this is Points to Ponder for the weekly Torah portion of Bo. Of the ten plagues inflicted upon Egypt, the ninth was darkness. This is how the Torah describes it. And there was thick darkness over the entire land of Egypt for three days. They did not see each other, and no one rose from his place for three days. Exodus 10, 22-23 as we can see, the phrase three days appears twice. From a simple reading of the verses, it appears that the purpose of this repetition is only for emphasis, and that the plague lasted three days. The Jewish sages, however, suggested a different reading, that the plague lasted six days, and consisted of two three-day stages, each involving a different kind of darkness. In the first three days, there was ordinary darkness. It was pitch black and they did not see each other. But in the final three days, there was a darkness which the sages dubbed double darkness. This was a tangible darkness, a darkness so thick and heavy that people actually couldn't move. This is why the second verse reads, and no one rose from his place for three days. According to the sages, this concept of a tangible darkness was also alluded to in God's decree of the plague of darkness in the preceding verse, verse 21, which employed the enigmatic word vayamish. The sages interpreted this word as a stemming from the Hebrew word mamash, which means real and tangible. These two types of darkness beautifully match the two classic answers given to the question, what is darkness? The more familiar answer, which fits the explanation from physics, says that darkness is simply the absence of light. When there's no light, whether physical or spiritual, darkness prevails. This is what took place in Egypt during the first three days of the plague. The second answer is that darkness is something, real, an actual entity. This kind of darkness is implied by the phrase used by Isaiah, creates darkness, bore choshech, which is contrasted to forms light, yotzer o. All this is in Isaiah 45.7. While formation in the phrase forms light is change of form, something from something, creation, as in creates darkness, is what it is called in Latin creatio ex nihilo, the coming into existence of something from nothing. This suggests that darkness is an actual something that was created out of nothing. In the field of physics, an equivalent to this positive, tangible, uh, actual kind of darkness can be found either in the concept of dark matter, which according to theory comprises the majority of matter in the universe, or alternatively in the concept of black holes, which are actually stars, very massive stars that are so heavy that they swallow up their own light and therefore appear dark. Now, where do these two kinds of darkness manifest in the realm of the human psyche? The most basic explanation offered by Hasidic teachings is that the absence of light darkness exists on the emotional plane, while the tangible darkness exists on the intellectual plane. But when you go deeper, you see that there exists between the two something called inter-inclusion, which means that both kinds of darkness exist on both levels, the emotional and the intellectual, as follows. On the emotional level, there is a darkness that comes merely from lack of warmth and love, a lack of closeness to people or surroundings that evoke positive emotions. But there is also a heavier emotional darkness, a darkness that's more real and tangible, that stems from traumas or emotional wounds. This darkness is sometimes so palpable, it can make it impossible to move, so to speak, emotionally, that is to advance in life. The same duality applies in the intellectual plane. There is a mental darkness that flows from a lack of positive thinking or from a failure to engage in constructive content. Much like a vacuum, such an empty mind attracts dark thoughts. But there is also a more thickly woven intellectual darkness which manifests as fully-fledged, fully-reasoned worldviews. The kind of worldviews that suggest that life is stark and meaningless and that therefore breed a kind of dark, brooding pessimism. Here too, once the mind is locked into such a paradigm, it becomes exceedingly hard for it to open up to more 
optimistic or spiritually oriented ways of thinking. Now, there is a well-known Jewish precept that says, a little light dispels much darkness. The moment one lights a candle or turns on a lamp in a dark room, even if that candle or lamp are small, the room is immediately lit up. And the same applies on a spiritual level. But lesser known is the precept's second half. The second half goes, and much light transforms darkness into light. On the surface, the phrases a little light and much light describe only a quantitative difference. According to this understanding, if we just add more and more light, more and more positive energy, it will succeed in both dispelling all of the negative energy and also somehow transforming it into a positive one. But on further thought, it seems more accurate to think of these phrases as describing a qualitative difference between two kinds of light. The little light signifies relatively simple positive energy, such as a heartwarming melody, words of encouragement, or a short and sweet Torah teaching. Conversely, the much light signifies a richer, more profound kind of positive energy, such as that found in a deep melody of longing, or in a heartfelt conversation, or in an in-depth and mind-expanding Torah. These two kinds of light correspond exactly to the two kinds of darkness that we've described before. Facing a darkness that is nothing but the absence of light, it is enough to shine little light. Warmth and love dispel this darkness from the heart, and short, sweet ideas banish it from the mind. But the case of the tangible darkness is more complex and nuanced. For starters, we now realize that this darkness isn't meant to be dispelled at all. Rather, it is meant to be transformed into light. Whether it be an emotional trauma, or a materialistic or atheistic worldview, a treasure of light lies buried within it, just waiting for someone who doesn't fear its dark mask to come and reveal it. Secondly, this transformation cannot be handled by the little light, the simple light. Only the much light, the richer, more profound light, has what it takes to penetrate the thick darkness, to wrestle with it, and to unravel it. On the emotional plane, this can be a deep emotional therapy, one that helps one overcome a trauma or a wound and discover the blessing hidden within it. On the intellectual level, it can be a deep Torah teaching that pierces a pessimistic worldview and illuminates it from within, raising the spark of holiness that it contains. People who go through life with tangible darkness in their hearts or in their minds may be endlessly exposed to the little type light, but it won't change them one bit. doesn't matter how much optimistic or nice music they listen to or how many words of encouragement they, they hear, it doesn't help because it, that's not the kind of light that they need. It's not the kind of light that can transform their kind of darkness, the, 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 the darkness that they carry within them, uh, into light. The only way the darkness within them can be healed is if someone sits with them and shines the much, the, the more profound kind of light into them. Such people are an invitation to all of us to become masters of light specializing in transforming the darkness of the world into a great light. Hi, if you enjoyed this video, please press like, subscribe to the channel, and consider sharing it with your friends. See you in the next video.